Hello guys and welcome to the review of last night's AFL match between Carlton and St Kilda at Marvel Stadium. Seeing St Kilda run out 18 point winners over a very gallant uh, Carlton side in the end. We got off to a really fast start, absolutely blew them out of the water by quarter time and at half time we kept them to two goals and scored seven ourselves. But in a game of two halves, they come back in the, especially the third quarter, but yeah, they kicked six goals to four in the second half and showed a really nice fight back. Um, but we're going to get into the game, going to talk about what I really liked, uh, maybe a few negatives as well. So without any further ado, let's get into it. The first thing I picked up was that we had a really solid defence. Most of their goals, I think six of their goals, I would class came from midfielders. Uh, they had Setterfield kicking two, Cripps one, Martin two, uh, Nunes one, and who else kicked one? Gibbons kicked one. So there's, there's six goals, I think, if I can count correctly. And Betts kicked uh, one. He kicked the first of the game for them. So I would class that as six midfield goals to one forward goal. And that's a really, that's a that's a credit to our defence. You know, uh, we kept um, Mackay, Casbolt and McGovern. They were, they were quiet, you know. Casbolt kicked one out of bounds on the full. He might have kicked another couple out of bounds on the full. I think he missed a few. McGovern is probably the worst pickup for Carlton of all time. And uh, Mackay didn't really see him at all. He took some really good marks along the line, but had no scoreboard effect. And I think that, uh, yeah, that's a credit to how well Duke, Dougal Howard performed. He played a really good, I guess, tagging role almost. Really kept them quiet. Jake Carlisle played well. And he just... Those two, and Wilkie was elite, 11 disposals in the first quarter. And what those three men do, containing their three tools, is they allow Long and Patton and Clark and Coffield to run mad. Ben Long took probably the mark of the year. We'll get into that in a minute. And uh, Coffield had 19 disposals, probably his best game for the club. Hunter Clark played well also. And who was the other one I mentioned? Ben Patton took some really good marks. He had a bit of a head knock, uh, had a bit of a nose issue for a bit there in the third quarter and then was off for a little bit in the fourth, but he was taking some really good defensive marks. Those four, and Rat said it in his press conference, are going to be really good in time. Right, next. Our forwards presented and they kicked goals. I've got a couple of notes here. They did. They pushed up the ground. Uh, King... His hands finally, they, they stuck. The marks in his hands stuck, and it was great. Uh, he was everywhere last night for a bit. Uh, you know, he kicked, kicked the first one, uh, set up one for Butler, kicked a second one. You know, he played really, really well, and so did all of our forwards. Butler was on the wing most of the time. Uh, Geary, like, they were all high forwards, and I like that. They were there to help the midfield if they needed, gets over the back. Have a goal, you know, Joe the Goose is out the back. It's fantastic. It's really good to see. We don't rely on anyone anymore. Uh, usually it was get the ball out of the middle via Ross, bang it into Josh Bruce and see what they can do. Whereas now it's get it out wide, look for the half forward line and failing that, go go looking for King or Membry or Gresham, see what they can do but trust that if it falls to the ground that Dan Butler and Jack Loney will be there to pick it up and hopefully score from it. And I think that that's really important going into this year and moving forward. My next point is Jack Steele, and I think that this one's pretty self-explanatory. Definitely got the three Brownlow votes in a bog performance, and he was just fantastic. Played a tagging role on Cripps, and I think that that was, and we'll get into the other tagging role in a minute, it was fantastic. He kept... Cripps to five disposals um, up till half time, and his job was done at that point. Cripps was completely rattled. He got back into the game, of course. He's a great player, and great players do that. I think he had 20 and a goal by the end of it, but he played up forward. Cripps was worried out of his position by Steele, and they had to make a coaching change. That is exactly what Brett Ratton wanted, and it was fantastic. The same happened with Doherty, and we'll get into that soon enough. I think that Steele played really, really well tackled like a machine, the machine he is. Had a lot of the ball himself. Yeah, he kept Cripps. You know, usually when there's a tagging role, you see Cripps have five disposals and uh, still have six disposals or eight disposals. He's beating him in the contest, but he's nullified himself to nullify another player. But 
he played real well. I think he had 23 to the end and nine tackles or something. So that was a huge effort. Um, Ratten obviously could have moved him to fullback. But I think that that's a waste of Jack Steele in the middle. Um, you know, obviously then he keeps Cripps to what like ten disposals. He probably gets that goal anyway because it was a it was a good finish. Um, so ten disposals and a goal instead of twenty disposals and a goal. But you know, at the end of the day, his work was done, and Steele continued to dominate the clearances and and the half forward line. The other tagger that I wanted to get into, and our new key forward is Jaron Geary, and I think that that was another really smart move. There was a thing. And I think I said it in my preview, there was a little thing going around on uh, Wednesday afternoon and yesterday afternoon as well that Geary would go to Doherty and tag him. And he did exactly that. Went to him in the first quarter, made him useless, kicked two goals on him, thought he'd have a third. And he nearly did, to be fair. He, he got a bit goal hungry towards the, uh, the end of the half and the end of the game. Uh, yeah, he did exactly what he was meant to do. Halved the contests, made Doherty look silly you know, ran rings around him and and we were all the better for it on the scoreboard and in our game. Doherty then moved. Uh, he moved to the wing and look again you could have you could have ran uh Doherty uh Geary alongside Doherty, but I'm glad that he didn't because then you you're showing that it's not just on Jaron to do everything. You know, Jaron's not the only tagger. Put that on your midfielders and I think that that's what he did with with Wilkie as well. He goes, All right, Steely's done his job. Right, we'll see what Wilkie can do. And Wilkie did all right, you know. Played a little bit out of position, and, and big, good players like Cripps do worry young defenders like Wilkie. And I feel like Doherty may have worried our winger out for a bit. I can't remember who it was. Might have been Hanabry before he went down. But, um, yeah, I think that he played really well. Both, uh, you know, Geary nullified Doherty, and Doherty couldn't really recover from that. And that's uh, that's fantastic. Next is Long's mark, and I think that's pretty self-explanatory. It was fantastic. Uh, for a defender to do that, it's unreal. You know, the courage that it took was so good. Enough said about that. Uh, my next uh, couple of points, uh, when we ran, we won. If we looked good and we looked fast and we kept it moving, we weren't going to be stopped. Um, but when we stopped, we died. Uh, you know, they were able to set up really well, force an arid kick, and that's that's a credit to them, but... When we ran, we looked unstoppable, you know. When we moved fast, we had numbers out the back, we were halving contests, we were winning those halved contests, and we were getting the ball forward. Um, and that's that's exactly right. You know, we have to keep the ball moving all the time. Obviously, it's not going to go that way all the time, but we need to find a way to keep it moving. Just keep willing it forward, and the pressure will come, both on the scoreboard and against the opposition. Our defensive setup was elite. Every time that they got the ball on our half forward line, uh, their half back line, we made it really difficult for them to get it out. They'd have to do uh, a couple of short kicks to about the wing and then try and send one to the half forward line and we'd punch it out of bounds. And that's that's exactly the setup that we need. Uh, what we need then is to keep it moving if we get the clearance out of the stoppage. Whereas I feel like last night we were a bit slow and they were able to um, defend that and get it forward. I think that that was probably my only gripe for the night. Uh, you know, we just needed to to put the cherry on the cake. You know, we'd done all that work to get it out of bounds, to set up well enough to get it out of bounds, and then you sort of give it up at the stoppage. But, you know, that's okay. Um, we'll, we'll get there in the end. It's only round five. We've got two really proving critical games to come, providing they happen, against Geelong and Port. So I think that they're going to be really interesting in time as well. We had great pressure. Our tackle pressure was elite. It was there. You know, worried them out to turn it over. There was a passage, and I remember it pretty clearly. We were moving it forward, and that puts pressure on people. When you're fast and you're moving it forward and you're cleaning your possession, it, it puts pressure on them. It worries them out of it. There was one, uh, it was just on the half forward line for us. Uh, there, was a, there was a contest. Gibbons handballs to Nunes and he just belted it on the boot. He was worried. He needed to move it forward because that's what had worked for us and that is what uh, didn't work for them. He turned it straight over to Coffield where you go forward again and that's exactly what he was set up to do. And that's just a credit to our pressure. You know, our tackle pressure was there, our forward pressure was there. There was one from, uh, I think, Butler uh, gave away a free, I think, in the forward line. Goes across goal, King gets the little fist, it bounces back up to him kicks it to Butler in the square, how's your sausage roll? It's very nice. It's worth six points. Uh, that's just fantastic. It's great pressure. Hoping to see that in the coming weeks and months. The umpires were not good. 
they were terrible. And look, we won the free kick count 19 to 18. You know, that is what it is. But there were a lot of frees that were and weren't paid. There was no consistency. I think that they set a precedence early by calling the bumps off the ball. And look, they're there if, if they're blatantly late. But if they're in the contest, I don't think that they're an issue. Like if somebody's kicking it and they get bumped straight after they kick it, they shouldn't be a free. But there were a couple of them last night, both to us and to them. Probably shouldn't have been paid. Uh, there were a lot of holding the balls that have just seemed to have gone missing, which is terrible. And, oh, I just, you know, there are a lot of free kicks that weren't paid to them that were paid to us. And look, I'm going to take them every day of the week. You know, if we get a shot on goal because of a free kick that shouldn't have been there, you know, I'll take it. But, you know, I, I did see them and they're just not good. They're not good for the game. They're not good for the commentary. They're not good for the congestion that they're trying to, to get out. It makes it more congested, if anything. And I think that the Clarko effect has worked. He goes, we need more free kicks, umpire the game properly, pay holding the balls. And then they forget to pay holding the balls, but they pay everything else on steroids. And I think that's an issue for the AFL going forward because there were just some of them that, that they weren't needed. And they just, I know that they're going to have happen in every game, but when you go from an average of what, 32? There was an, there's an average of 32 free kicks a game. When we had 32 at three-quarter time, that sets you up for a bad last quarter because, you know, there were only five and maybe there were only five there to be paid, but they're trying to then, you know, they're trying to nullify the free kick just so they can keep themselves on a number. My last gripe is that we fell asleep. Uh, we And look, I've had a think about this one overnight and I, uh, we, we did come off a five-day break. Uh, it's going to happen. We're going to be tired. We're going to have a bit of bit of aching in the legs and in the body. A pretty tough game. We did fall asleep in the last five minutes of the third and the fourth, and they kicked four goals in that 10 minutes. Now, that's not something that's good. Now, I don't know if that change is coming off a seven-day break or a six-day break. Maybe it was just a five-day break. I'm not sure. But I think against good teams, they make you pay for that. Carlton are a good team. They're on the way up. But I think that, you know, against the Geelong, if they get four goals in 10 minutes, they're going to come out after three-quarter time. Oh, you know, they get two goals in five minutes. They come out after three-quarter time and they, they make you pay. But we were lucky we had Prospect in the ruck and he played superbly. We'll go on to my votes real quickly and I uh, put these on Twitter as well. Uh, my three votes was to steal. He just got a little padlock emoji. Um, my two votes were split between, I can't even remember, uh, Marshall and Caulfield. I think it was Caulfield's best game for the club. Played really, really well. Looked looked like a 50-game player, 100-game player. And um, Marshall played superbly. Won us the game in that last quarter. He just showed his dominance, got it forward, roved his own work. He's like a seventh midfielder, which is exactly what you want in a young ruckman. And my one vote goes to either Billings or Geary. Um, you know, his job on Doherty early, Geary's, was, was fantastic. Set us up really well for the rest of the game. Um, and Billings, I, I gave him a vote as well. I think he played well enough. He goes unnoticed, especially not just, not just in games, but as a player. You know, in that draft, he was taken between, what, Petraka and Bontempelli or Brayshaw and Bontempelli, I think. You know, that's a pretty tough draft. And for him to do what he's doing at the moment is fantastic. Uh, so let me know what you thought of the game down below. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please chuck us a like and a subscribe down below. Have a great day. Cheerio, sayonara, and goodbye.